Welcome back everybody to the BD1P random character streak. Today is going to be a random normal character run for win number hopefully 197. We are getting pretty damn close to the big 200, but today's question of the day, put your answer in the comments down below if you feel like it is going to be, what do you think is the best superhero TV show out there? Whether it be Netflix, Disney+, Plus, DC, Marvel, whatever it is, wherever it comes from, what is the best do you think Kane, I can do a Kane run today, sure. See, it is going to be ZY8J04Z3. I have been re-watching um, recently the uh, Daredevil Netflix TV show, which I think personally uh, is the best one out there. You can make an argument for Jessica Jones being better. Uh, maybe even, I wouldn't personally say it, but the early, early, early Arrow and Flash seasons, maybe, possibly. I don't like them that much anymore, though. I think they're kind of terrible. Uh, but you could definitely make an argument for those two, for sure. But uh, something about Daredevil, especially season three, has just always blown me away. Like, sure, season one is, is really, really, really good. You get a nice look into how the character starts, his first kind of uh, roadblocks, he encounters, things like that. But when you get to season two, it's when things really start picking up. You get, you know, you, oh, the, the thing happened with the black fly becoming the pooter, dude, that was insane. You get the Punisher is there. Um, you get a lot more of a, a deeper line between Matt Murdock and the Daredevil connection uh, in, the, in the terms of like, who he has to be on a daily basis to hide his identity. You get the more, like, in-depth, you know, the Defenders type stuff. There really is a lot to go off of there. But, still, can we maybe, like, hit both of these? You were so close. Either way, Super Secret Room gives us not that worth it of a trinket. Damn, we could have gotten, like, the Fool's Gold and the Nickel. That would have been amazing, but no, no big deal, I guess. Um... You get that kind of more uh, Matt Murdock versus Daredevil kind of storyline, plus the setup for the Defenders, which is kind of a messy show, I will say. The only good bits of that show are Jessica Jones and Daredevil. Obviously, Iron Fist is, is just always been fucking bad. Luke Cage is like... I don't know. I don't hate Luke Cage. I just think it's a little bit underwhelming. Like, when you put a character who just his whole thing is like, I am, you know, super tough against... A martial artist who's partially blind and a super strong PI. The story doesn't really get me that much. Plus the the acting, especially in in the Luke Cage regular show, like just the standalone show, is is usually <laughs> pretty not that great. The show is better than Iron Fist for sure, but it is definitely nowhere near the level of Jessica Jones and Daredevil. That's for goddamn sure. The, it's a little bit loud, isn't it? The game. Turn that down a little bit there. Um, but. Season 3 of Daredevil is when I think the show hits its perfect moment. And it is currently the last season of the show, despite it probably coming back in the form of uh, the new Marvel Echo show and then an unofficial, or sorry, a new official Daredevil Season 4 uh, return. Uh, rumored, at least. not Nothing guaranteed, obviously, but definitely rumored right now. Damn, no solely there, huh? Early boss fight, though, is really nice for having no soul hearts right now. Especially when our our, <laughs> our DPS is great because of Peeper's Eye, weirdly enough, but it still isn't doing a lot for me right now. But I think it's really cool to see that kind of storyline of, of Matt having to either give up being Matt or give up being Daredevil to truly kind of figure out what he wants to do with his life and where he wants to go with it. And that just constant struggle of, like, my friends need me, but the city also needs me is... A really, really, really well-told storyline in the show's own, you know, little universe there. Uh, plus, I gotta say, the actual storyline itself with, with Kingpin invading the FBI. This was a terrible room. And, you know, getting agents on his payroll and just having pretty much everybody under his thumb. And seeing Matt just go fucking ballistic because of that. It is super entertaining. You have that, that prison scene. You have the, the penthouse scene with, with Matt beating up Kingpin. You have so much going on. It, it's incredible. You have the, the church fight scene and Father Lantham's, you know, uh, spoiler death. It's so fucking crazy how well put together and shot that show is. Charlie Cox, by the way, is an amazing actor. Um, I don't know if he's been in much else, but the way that he portrays Matt Murdock and kind of like the... I guess emotion behind the character, it comes across like no other. I don't think I've been attached to a superhero, um, I guess, 
relationship as much as Matt and, and Foggy. That did a whole heart, huh? Be careful for your devil deal here. I'm probably not going to walk in um, anyways, but I do want to have the higher chance for an angel deal if possible. Okay, good, good, good. Just stand your ground over here. Don't let that last leech hit you. Perfect. Unless Mr. Dolly gives us tons of... Okay, you know what? I'll walk in. Sure, you got me hooked. And thank God we did. That is two incredible items right there. Big damage, big tier rate. You gotta love it. Um, like, I watching the show, I was just... Even watching it back for my third time now, um, when Matt is beating up Kingpin in the penthouse, like, I, I just... <laughs> It's perfect. Like, the sh I'm, I'm actually, like, I'm, my mouth is open. I'm like, holy shit, this scene is so fucking good. The, the choreography, the way they handle the three-person fight, Vanessa also being there. I mean, it's handled so well. And the callbacks, too. The primal scream happening, like, it's just, it's immaculate. It really is. And I don't know, honestly, if they're going to be able to top that. Now, I know that in the current MCU uh, timeline, the King well, Kingpin comes back in the Hawkeye show which takes place and ends right at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. And Matt was in that movie, so we know Matt is still kicking around doing his, his lawyering business. So that says to me that when they do the Echo show, and Echo is Kingpin's adopted daughter, for those of you who aren't aware of the, the MCU stuff, when they eventually do that and they, they decide to go through with the Echo show, it is definitely going to be a Kingpin Matt Murdock storyline because Matt's a pretty big part of Echo's uh, upbringing from what I understand. I'm not a huge MCU fan, but the things that I do know about it, um, I know that Echo is a, is a is affected a lot by Matt uh, in her upbringing. And I don't know. I'm really interested to see how they kind of bring Fisk back in there because they kind of already finished the, the Fisk and uh, Murdock storyline there. Like... Kingpin's forced to keep Matt secret because Matt's going to go after Vanessa if not. Pinkpin also is blinded uh, partially now by the gunshot at the end of Hawkeye, I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of ways they could go with it. And I just want to see Charlie Cox back in that costume. Um, and with the end, the season three's ending was fucking perfect. I mean, just just all the, the wounds being healed with Foggy and Karen. I mean, it was just... It was a very, very amazing send-off. And honest to God, like... I will constantly shit on um, superhero shows because a lot of them are fucking awful. Even the ones that I like, like Young Justice, there, there are definite moments that this show is, is fucking awful. I never felt that with Daredevil. Even in the weaker lines, like even with some of the, the, the Punisher stuff, I never felt like it was a bad show. And the Punisher show as well is great. John Benthal, is just the, the anger and rage he brings to the table with that, uh, unparalleled. And, it, you know, good acting is not always just, like, who can cry the hardest, who can scream the loudest, but it does show a lot of skill when, when an, an actor can bring across that kind of uh, emotion. Whether it be impressive or not uh, in terms of, of general acting skill, it is still amazing to see an actor kind of channel that rage or that emotion into their character's role. It really is. And that goes to say, like, there's tons of shows that came out this year that I think... Um, are getting pretty heavily misrepresented in terms of their acting skills. Uh, one of those, and this is going to be obviously another BD1P complains about Euphoria, but uh, is actually it's a positive here. It's a positive, trust me. I, I saw the recent episode of Euphoria, which was the one where, where Rue goes crazy because she lost all of her drugs and she's going to get fucking kidnapped and sold to the sex slaves and all that. and Terrible, 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 terrible things, but... um. I've seen a lot of posts about the show, not even just that part, but the previous episodes revolving around the character Cassie, where Cassie is very emotional. It's like, Cassie deserves an Oscar because look how good she can cry in this scene, and it's like, I guarantee you every Hollywood actor or actress can cry on command, it's not a big deal. Um, and I, I love, you know, Euphoria. I think season one's a great season, I think season two has kind of fallen flat, but there are still parts that I'm actually really enjoying about it. Um, I gotta say, I mean, no, like, you can't just say because an actress or actor is able to cry that they're an amazing, you know, performer, because crying is not, like, that impressive to me. I mean, I, I, I haven't cried since I was a kid, I don't think. Maybe, like, a couple times in middle school, I have no idea, but if I wanted to, I'm pretty sure I could cry on command and make it pretty damn convincing. And it's these people's job. I think part of, like, the fucking point of being an actor is, like, 
Can you cry on command? Can you do this? Like, can you throw up on command? Do all these crazy weird things on command. So, you know, just because Cassie's character can cry and be sad does not make her <laughs> an Oscar-worthy performer. However, I will say, Zendaya's performance in the most recent episode was fucking... I don't even know how to explain it. It was just, it was gut-wrenching. As someone who had friends who struggled a lot with drug addiction in high school, uh, one of my best friends falling victim to, to, to a lot of terrible uh, drug addictions back in high school, it, it really was like... Point for point, what goes on in, in, in an addict's mind. Uh, and it was just, like, it was almost hard for me to watch, honestly. I Because I was getting, like, like, that was my friend back in school. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, Sam Levinson is not the world's greatest writer. He is <laughs> not that good in certain situations. But um, I, I don't know what he was on when he wrote that episode. But holy fucking shit, was that scene powerful. If you don't know what Euphoria is, it's this show about a, a character played by Zendaya named Rue, and uh, she is a recovering addict in high school, and it kind of follows her and her friends uh, through a really uh, hyperbolized high school experience and uh, touches a lot on the, the effects of drug abuse on friendships and family and stuff like that. Um, and there have been a lot of, of letdowns in this season so far. I will say a lot of the characters have been kind of given weird lines like, for some reason, the character who whose kind of trope was dealing with, um, I guess it was a feeling of, I don't even know what Kat's whole thing was, but she her kind of whole trope in the beginning was she really wanted attention because all of her friends are like these really popular preppy girls who get a tons of attention from, attention from guys, and she wanted to have that same sexual attention, but now her storyline is she found a really nice boyfriend, but she doesn't like him anymore, and that's her whole entire story, and it's like it doesn't make any sense. The, the whole character's point was she wanted that attention. She finally has it. Now she doesn't want it anymore. Like, they're, they're rewriting her story backwards constantly. And there is rumor of that actress. Um, I think her name is Barbie. And sh how the writer of the show, Sam, and her don't really get along. And it, it they cut a lot of her storyline out of the show, which I guess now makes a lot more sense. But um, it just, like, they dropped her storyline. They've been focusing on Cassie and how she's having sex with her best friend's ex-boyfriend, which is like, why do I care? I'm here to watch the storyline of, of Rue recovering and like how that affects their friendships. We have seen less of Rue than we've seen of any other character in that show. We've seen more of Cassie's breasts than Rue in that show. It's like, they kind of lost their mojo for a bit, but they, they definitely got it back recently. Um, and it's part of the poll for me of that show was like, Zendaya and, and Hunter Schaefer, two of the lead actresses, were on the writing board and producers for the show in the first season. Apparently now, uh, as far as the credits tell us, that Hunter is no longer writing on the show, apparently, and Zendaya is rarely ever doing any directorial stuff, which shows the big tonal shift in the show for sure. Um, definitely for worse. I really do miss the energy they both brought to, to the, the characters, but... They sidelined a lot of the cool storylines. They just made it seem pretty useless. But I I gotta say, like, they, they brought it back. They really, really did. They hit every single note. And the thing was, like, I would not be mind. I would mind. I would not mind if they scrapped, like, half of the characters in the show and just made it Rue's story. Because to be honest with you, like, and I know it's supposed to appeal to a wider audience of people and, and their struggles in high school and, and school in general and their social life. But... I really can't relate to, to anybody in the show besides, like, partially Rue. Um, and, and even on Hunter Schaefer's character, uh, Jules, as well. Like, I, I don't really find myself um, kind of getting it. And I think a lot of the general community that was, uh, you know, loved the show in season one are feeling the same way. Because I see a lot of tweets that are like, what the fuck is up with this recent season? It's, like, actually so bad. Like, they're, they're just, they're walking everything back. The severity of the choices don't seem to matter anymore, and they brought a lot of weird characters on board that are kind of like side to almost like borderline main characters now. And the, the biggest problem in season one was how big the cast was. You didn't really get a lot of time with the less important people like Cat or like Cassie. But instead of rectifying that by writing out some of the lesser liked or lesser respected characters, they brought more on. In form of like a character named Elliot, who is now a, uh, you know, someone who influences Rue to do more drugs. 
he is now a main character for some reason and is also now sleeping with with Rue's girlfriend, which makes it another whole convoluted thing. It's like none of the characters do anything that makes sense. It's supposed to be, I get it, a hyperbolized look into, a, into the high school situation. And every character represents a different trope. Rue is the, you know, the, the druggy, I guess, hyperbolized. Maddie is like the preppy girl hyperbolized. Cassie is the very emotional girl, you know, hyperbolized. Kat is kind of the, you know, um, it, she doesn't really have a trope, I guess. Cash is kind of Kat, I guess, but, um, they've kind of walked that back, and in the first season, the hyperbolized characters had points. Like, their storylines had resolutions that made the hyperboles make more sense. Like, Cassie ended up leaving her, you know, popular boyfriend to be with her friends. It kind of showed that, you know, nothing is, it lasts forever. And, um, Cassie, her story, I guess, I, hopefully I said, I think I said Maddie first. Uh, Cassie kind of uh, became closer with her sister, and they both helped Rue with her, you know, addictions. Uh, Jules found acceptance through, you know, just being free and, and, and just trying to explore life. Like, there were points to it. Now it's just like, they use the tropes to progress almost comedic storylines now. And it's like, I don't like it. I, 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 there's no severity. There's no consequence. The only consequence we've seen now is is recent, most recently, I guess. I can't tell which one is my eye, by the way. Uh, most recently is Rue and her losing all of her drugs. It, it's just, it's not speaking to me anymore. I'll bite. Yo? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're going to take this with us. I, I'm not going to pop it until we find our first pedestal, but I'm going to definitely take Damocles with us. It has been a long while, my friend, the Damocles. It has been a long-ass time. I know many of you probably don't watch the show or don't really care to hear about the show at all, but I'm just trying to make a comparison between what started as, you know, what is good acting, what is bad acting, and what is just average acting. And that is why you don't pop Damocles right away, boys and girls. Um, and I guess to wrap my point up here, it is not the severity of your emotion that gives you... Um, you know, uh, an Oscar-worthy performance in my eyes. I think what makes your performance Oscar-worthy or really good is how your subtleties come through in that major emotion. Because you, I, I can go on camera and I can scream, you know, and, and yell and cry. And, you know, it, w it wouldn't be as good as Sidney Sweeney, but it would be my own kind of thing. And I could definitely make it, you know, it's, it's like, all right. I think where it really comes through is it's, it's kind of like the look in the eye. It, it's it's the the... the corner of the mouth it's it's the very small things that come through with that and with charlie cox's daredevil i mean he is a, a seeing man playing a blind guy <laughs> i mean how do you make that any oh i should have popped this already huh yikes well we popped it now it's all right we'll take dry baby for the damage reduction hoping for a soul heart and uh this is actually going to be really helpful for us because we can now uh get this we can go to boss rush and teleport out and then use this on the womb floors and get a, a free floor, pretty much. So far, so good, man. Damocles is a very fun item. Hopefully, he does not uh, punish us too much today. But, like, he's playing a, a seeing man who's supposed to be blind, and he plays the blind character well. But he also is supposed to have a lot of repressed anger and, and other issues. <laughs> Black hole clutch, baby? That was so sick. Um, like, for example... Every, the whole point of Season 3 is everybody in Matt's life leaves him at some point. Karen and Foggy both kind of... Well, he, he, like, cuts them off pretty much. His dad throws his boxing match and gets killed because of it. Like, oh boy. That was not very good. That was not very good. Uh, I gotta go a little bit faster here. You know? Things happen. Things happen. Uh, our run is really great. I got hit because I'm being a fucking bozo. That's why. It was not the game that was entirely on me. I, I dodged in a stupid way. Trying to move away from the uh, top door so the, the hand wouldn't come out and grab me. Dude, the foot. The foot almost got me again. Okay. Polaroid. Bang. Um, oh, God. Damocles is right. I forgot that happens in here. Uh, I'm going to save it. That's not really worth it in my eyes. We're just going to move on. We're going to pop the, uh, the item here. So we can run as fast as we can and hopefully get a respawn... In our devil deal, if possible. Doesn't seem to be super likely because we, we never really get that happening for us, I feel like. Yo. 
Oh, yeah, that happens, too. Well, this is an amazing build now. Uh, and that's pretty nice. I should still be going a little bit faster, I feel like. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. We now have triple tech with rubber cement, uh, which is very, very nice. Now I'm very scared to lose this run and die on the streak to what is a, a really cool Technicolor kind of thing going on here. We did find our boss fight. Again, you know what I want? Dude, Skolex is already almost, like, finished. There we go. We'll take this. We'll take this. Please? Uh, eesh. Is the mark worth it? I guess HP is not a big deal if we're going to die in one hit anyways, I think, regardless, so... Um, hand? Oh, it's already dead because the thing happened, right? <laughs> we'll just move on here, and we'll keep trying to go fast here. The extra damage is nice. It really is. I respect it. And we have the full card for a, a quick turnaround if need be. Um, if, like, we go too far to the left and it's not that way. Just smaller stuff like that. For example, like right there. That was the wrong way to go. And we took the full card and got out of there real fast and saved it. Probably saved like a minute of our time there, beating the room and walking all the way back and maybe even choosing the wrong direction. God forbid. Okay. Where was that golden chest? That could have good stuff in it. Well, that would have been good. I'll take it for now. Right? An envy fight. Uh, Dude, sure. I'll take shoot the whoop for now. It could be good. I gotta focus now. I'm sorry. The banter time is over. It's time to actually game. Your health up, right? One I thought one of you was. I thought one of you was. Might have been the other orange and yellow pill. I have no idea. Ooh, that dodge. I haven't played Isaac in a while. I played like I, I recorded a couple runs two days ago. This is my first time back, so forgive me. Forgive me. Good. Okay. We're at our boss fight. We could get a respawn here. We would not be able to take it properly, though. Nine lives could be the, the dream item right now. Good brimstone. Get the tears out of here. Okay, good. Got a no deal. Uh, just go up. I'm not gonna go to the void. Not now. We do not have the build to fight delirium. I feel like, uh, <laughs> personally, this hope and shoes. Oh, okay. This room sucks. I hate this. Full health. Must have been you from earlier, huh? Keep going. And it's the wrong way. God damn the Pultis. Just go, dude. I'm gonna guess right now. Are we gonna choose every wrong Polaroid direction again here? This always happens with me, dude. This always happens. It's always this floor. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Damocles, baby. No, 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 no. Gaming. Eternal Heart, come on. Yes, squeezy. Okay. Oh, you bitch. Thank you, dry baby. It's an auto scroller fight now. Pretty much. Bomb hit there. Okay, one more cycle and we're done with this. And we only have one more floor to go. A okay, little bit faster. A little bit faster. Having some very quick runs, by the way. 24 minutes again here. My lord. Okay, so it looks great. This is great. And sure. Oh, yeah. That, that's real nice. It may not be any stronger than it was before, but still... I like this. Soul hearts or HP up? Yo, great. Thank you. I could have used that a while ago, but I appreciate it now as well. Come on, just hold it out. You're going to be fine here. He died first. Interesting there. Good. Damocles could still fall. Good. Okay. 
One hit there is not the end of the world. Oh, I should have guessed it was the wrong way, huh? Good. I am praying for Damocles to never fall. It's on average 15 minutes. Ow. Okay. Good. BD1P guesses the right direction? Real? 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 Do it actually real? This is the greatest and most unconventional day of my life. There we go. Algis. Beautiful. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's a really tempting offer. That is a really tempting card. It would be faster than Alge's. Safer though? We're gonna go, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. But go fast, please. <laughs> okay, we won. <sighs> Another really short run. I don't think we've... We haven't had anything over half an hour in like three episodes. But if you enjoyed that run and my commentary, a like and a comment goes a long way for a smaller channel like mine. In the meantime, guys, I have been BD1P. Peace out and goodbye.